All right, tubers, Matt and Roy back once again. Wow, man, you guys are great out there. I'm looking at the uh, likes. We're up to 33 likes. Okay, so I want to preface this particular live stream by saying that I am not a doctor, I'm not any in any way, shape, or form. So everything that I tell you should be taken with a grain of salt and may not necessarily work uh, for everybody out there. That being said, what now, do you guys really think that this was a serious title? I mean, come on, binge eat to lose weight. I mean, come on, you guys know me better than this, right? You guys know that I would never tell you to binge eat to lose weight, right? Wrong. That is actually wrong, believe it or not. And uh, I'm going to explain here in just a minute, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a backstory. Um, those of you that haven't been with my channel for long know that um, I have been on a weight loss journey for the last two plus years. And since then, I have lost half my body weight. Basically, um, I am half the man I used to be, literally, and that's in a good way. Now, today, I had actually achieved 30,000 steps. As a matter of fact, I'm almost at 32,000 steps now, which equates to about 5,000 calories burned for my particular body. Now, you people out there, you in YouTube land may be different. You may have a different body chemistry. You may not burn calories as fast as I do. You may burn them faster than I do. It's absolutely possible. It could be either way. Now, the reason that I said binge eat to lose weight, especially after a day of intense exercise like I did today. What tends to happen is your body needs those calories and not just any calories. When you are working out intensely, you're building up a sweat, you're taxing your body, you know, upper body strength training, we're talking about cardio endurance. Your body needs carbohydrates. Now, yes, ideally you want to get those from complex carbohydrates. So we're talking about things like oatmeal, uh, whole grain breads, um, you know, things like that that are actually healthy for you. However, every once in a while, it is not a bad idea, believe it or not, to binge eat on some garbage. And yeah, my go-to garbage, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, Cool Ranch Doritos. When they introduced these things in around 1995, I was in middle school and I used to consume these by the bag full, hence my weight gain and then the need for the weight loss. But I'll be honest with you, oh, even though that's an empty bag, that is an intoxicating aroma. Oh my gosh. Oh, that just takes me back. Um, this is not health food. I am not boasting that this is health food. Um, it's garbage. It really is. But eating this every once in a while, especially after an intense day of workout, can actually help you lose weight in the long run. And there are a few reasons for that. Number one, it's treating yourself. After you have been so good working out so much, you know, eating the right things, doing the right thing for your body, let's face it, it feels good to indulge yourself every once in a while. No problem there. That being said, you don't want to get into the mindset, okay, and now I indulge in myself. If I work out again tomorrow like that, I'm going to go ahead and do it again. No, no, no. You need to make this like maybe a one week, even a once every two week thing, because doing this kind of binge eating enough times can and will eventually make you put the weight back on. Um, but the second reason this can be good for you every once in a while is it will actually help flush your system out. Believe it or not, the kind of foods that you're going to be eating on a regular basis, the complex carbohydrates, the fruits, the vegetables, the salads, that stuff is extremely binding. There's not a lot of fat in there. So what tends to happen is it'll actually pool up in your colon after time and can make you get 
constipated. And that happens to me a lot. And I'm talking about a lot. So for me to do a binge eat like this with junk food, so we're talking Doritos. I showed you that other bag. You probably couldn't see it that well, but that was filled with uh, salted uh, caramel Godiva chocolates. And I polished those off tonight too. I know, right? Oh my goodness, Matt, what are you doing to yourself? Well, Eating that kind of stuff, believe it or not, will clean out your system. Now, ideally, after doing a quote-unquote binge eat like this, you want to have about a week where you are eating really healthy again. And yes, there are other ways you can clean your body out. Um, I tend to take psyllium fiber on a regular basis, usually every other day, uh, citricol, um, is the one that I go for, the Aldi generic one, though you can also take things like Metamucil. Um, yeah, I know, right? Good old Metamucil. But the idea behind this is you also want to kind of shock your body. I know you're thinking that's not a good thing. Well, believe it or not, every once in a while it is because your body will get used to whatever you're doing. And eventually, eventually, even if you're doing everything right, eating all the right foods, exercising, doing all the right exercises, you're going to plateau because your body is going to figure out what you're trying to do. And it's going to want to stay at that same weight, even if you're still trying to go down. So doing this, once again, believe it or not, will help you in the long run. Nick Roberts, you did a good job losing weight. I've seen your old videos. You really look much better. Well, now, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And it just wasn't for me, though, to be perfectly honest. There was some selfish reasons there. Um, but it was also because I knew if I could figure out how to do it, then I could tell all of you out there how to do it. And again, I am not a doctor. So whatever I'm telling you in these types of vlogs, you want to take that information to your doctor and make sure that it is appropriate for you as an individual. Eric Variety Channel, I accidentally fasted today, so I'm about to binge, LOL. <laughs> Man, I knew some of you guys were going to take this the wrong way. Um, but no, I mean, that's okay. Just remember, fasting, binging, fasting again, but, but it can make it harder to fast. If you have not trained your body to be able to handle those long periods of time without food, it can be very difficult. It took me a good two or three months to be able to train my body to where I could fast for 12, 13, 14 hours. Now I'm not going to fast uh, tomorrow. I'm going to eat breakfast tomorrow morning. Um, but I'm going to try to stop eating around uh, two or three. I want to do that 18-6 where I fast for 18 hours and eat for six hours. I had to do that quickly in my head to make sure I had it uh, the math right. Eric goes, I had no intentions on almost going 12 hours without eating. Well, sometimes we get busy and uh, life makes us fast. Nick Roberts, I eat one of those chips and I can't stop. You know, I honestly think that was the idea when these came out. And I'm not talking about these Doritos. These are awesome, the Cool Ranch. But even the original nachos and then the spicy salsa ones they have out now, that's the problem. You eat one of these things, you can't stop. And um, Frito-Lay, you're guilty. Actually, um, Frito-Lay acquired Doritos later on, I think. Originally, Doritos were their own company, if I'm not mistaken. Victor Del Fuente, do you juice uh, any veggies or fruit and drink it? Uh, no. Uh, that is a great way to get your fruits and vegetables, believe it or not. I know, and I know a lot of people that do it, but honestly, I would rather just eat my fruits and vegetables. Um, for breakfast, I have uh, two servings of steel-cut oatmeal, which is actually in a really big bowl. Um, it's about two cups cooked. And to that, I'll, I'll add uh, strawberries, uh, mangoes, and then I usually use real maple syrup to um, sweeten it. And I even have a banana with it. So I have a big, big breakfast. And then for lunch, I'll have usually chicken salad, uh, which I make personally, which I make from chicken breasts. It has uh, onions, peppers, garlic. So that's got a lot of vegetables in it. And with that, I have my homemade 15 bean soup, which has tons of vegetables. I mean, we're talking about celery, carrots, onions. So as Guy Fieri would say, mirepoix. 
Um, it also has okra, um, all different kinds of tomatoes. So I get my vegetables, but I don't like juicing them. I mean, that's just me. If it works good for you, please do it. But just for me, I'm not much of a juicer myself. Yes, Mark Covington, that is very important. And yes, I do. He says, do you include prayer with your fasting? Yes, but it depends on the type of fast. I don't mix spiritual and health fasting together. There is a difference. Um, if I'm doing a spiritual fast, I won't, I'll, I'll pray. Um, and I usually won't announce it because they're supposed to be silent. Um, if it's just a food fast, then I still do pray because the big man upstairs definitely does help. Sonic Wang asks, do you like cantaloupe? Uh, yes, when it's in season, though I've got a few out of season. I would never do that again. They're usually, they tend to be usually very bitter. If you ever had like a cantaloupe that's not ripe or it's just out of season, they tend to be a little on the hard side, even once they get ripe and they just have kind of like a bitter, almost a, a coffee bean taste to them. But if you get a cantaloupe that is just right, has been ripened to its peak and it was harvested at the right time, it can kind of have a sweet, almost salty taste to it. It's delicious. Eric's Friday channel feels really good just getting out of the shower into fresh water and dry clothes, still warm from the dryer. Oh, yeah, that is really a good feeling. Yes, I do eat watermelon, and uh, watermelon is actually one of the best fruits for you, especially if you're a diabetic. Uh, reason being, it is mainly made up of water and has very little sugar compared to other fruits. So, Excellent, Mark. I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay, I hope at this point everybody gets the gist of, of this live stream. And yes, that title was kind of clickbaity, and I guess the likes and the watchers kind of bear that out. I, I hate the fact that I have to do that now with YouTube. So if I do put up a quote-unquote clickbaity title, um, I try to make the topic germane at least somewhat to, to what that title says. Eric goes, maybe I've had cantaloupe from the wrong picking time. I just can't stand most melons. Yeah, if you get a cantaloupe from the grocery store, chances are you're not going to like it. You really got to find a roadside stand. I usually get our cantaloupes from Morris Farm Market in um, North Carolina. It's near the Outer Banks. Uh, I don't actually remember what town it's in, but you guys can look it up. Um, actually, I could probably uh, look it up myself. It's called Morris Farm Market. Barco, Barco, North Carolina. I never, I never would have gotten that one. Let me share that with you guys. If you live on the East Coast near North Carolina, you could stop there when they're in season. They have great cantaloupes. They have tons of fresh fruit and vegetables. Definitely a place to go and visit. Victor De La Fuente, do you have a Costco in your area, Matt? We actually don't. Uh, the closest Costco is about an, an hour away on a good day, and that's somewhere in Newport News. Actually, we used to be a member of it. We used we thought it might be worth it, even though it was a far, far distance. Um, but we actually have another one here called BJ's, which is a whole, another wholesale club, very similar to Costco, um, but they're mainly on the East Coast. So you guys out there that are in the U.S., live in the Midwest, and on the West Coast, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, BJ's has very, very similar um, items, food-related items mostly. I have to say, though, that when it comes to electronics, um, I prefer Costco and even more so Sam's Club. Yes, Eric. I, I you know, I should I should have thought about that too. I, I should I should have figured you wouldn't be getting your your melons and stuff from uh, the store. He lives in farm country. Yeah. Yeah, and I've actually visited Eric on several occasions. Um, the last time I visited, I actually got to kind of see where he's from, and it's actually a really, really cool area. I'm not going to give your location away, Eric. Don't worry about it, but 
Um, yeah, you kind of live in a, it's weird because I always think thought where you lived, it would be more industrial, but it really wasn't. I mean, there was a, definitely a lot of fresh farms out that way. As a matter of fact, we met up at a, uh, last time we met up at a, uh, farmer's market or flea market. I don't know what you call it, but anyway, it was in the middle of nowhere. And I had the Yukon with me and I was trying to get back to the highway as fast as I could, because, you know, that thing on, on the highway, it, you might be lucky to eke out 16 miles gallon. So the back roads, it took me, I had to drive like 10 miles on back roads just to get to a highway. And in the end, it wasn't even the highway that I needed, but it took me to the highway that I needed. I'll bet you we can hit 50 likes. That is awesome. You guys out there are so awesome. I really appreciate my YouTube family. You know, I, I have, you know, I feel bad because there are times that I really get short with you guys. Um, me having that Asperger's syndrome, I kind of just lose control sometimes and I lash out when I shouldn't, but you guys keep me in check. You really do. Hey, Matt, we have a Dean and Don's here in Newport News that sells produce during the spring and summer months. Interesting. I'll have to check it out next time I'm up there. We have a few on the south side as well, but I've heard or heard tell that uh, they're not as fresh as some of the other ones. Um, we had one over in a little town called Driver, which is pretty close to me. That was excellent, and unfortunately, the gentleman closed up. I guess he wasn't getting enough um, enough business. Eric's right, John. If you go about seven to ten miles north, it's nothing but warehouses. <laughs> that is so weird, and and you know what? It, it, it shouldn't surprise me because when I lived in upstate New York years ago. Um, you know, we had the same kind of thing, except where we were, you had to drive like 30 miles to get to a major town. Everything else was like houses and wasn't even farm country because where we lived, it was all rocks. You really couldn't farm there at all. Oh man, Sonic Wang, I, you are preaching to the choir, buddy, with these Asperger's. I'm telling you, it's not fun. And those of you out there that don't have it have no idea what a struggle it can be. Eric's Friday Channel, in my area, we have three BJs, Sam's Club and Costco. But Costco, Costco is in an annoying area where the mall is. Oh, I would stick to BJ's and Sam's Club then. Costco is, is good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Costco. The only problem with Costco is, and this is just an issue with our family, there's only three of us, me, mom, and dad. And you have to buy everything in bulk at Costco. Unlike some of the other ones, Sam's Club, you don't have to buy such large amounts. And the problem is we just wouldn't use a lot of the stuff before it would go bad. Victor De La Fuente, have you tried any of Beyond Meat products before? Yes, I am a fan of Beyond Meats. I've had the Beyond Burger, uh, not only the one that you can get at Burger King and now at Denny's, but also the one you can get at home. Um, and I really do like it. Uh, matter of fact, that's the only way I can eat burgers because I am now a fully allergic to beef. If I eat beef, I get deathly ill. My, I have stomach cramps and uh, indigestion for, for a few days. So it's the only way I can eat it. But I do want to tell you that the Beyond Burgers are not really any healthier than their beef counterparts. Um, the reason I say that is to make them taste as good as they do, they have to add a lot of salt into the mix. So those of you out there with high blood pressure, me included, um, need to be very careful. Um, when you eat things like that, make sure that you um, limit the salt intake for the rest of your day. Eric's Friday Channel, I usually stick with BJ's because there's one right by my job where the New Castle Farmer's Market is. That's right. And I know that <laughs> And I know that because when we go up there, we've met Eric a few times at the farmer's market. And uh, at that point, we usually have to gas up. And since mom and I are both BJ's members, that's actually where we gas up usually. Yes, Mark. Um, he goes beyond, sir. Or, uh, Hardy serves beyond bur beef burgers and sausage biscuits. 
I've heard of the uh, sausage biscuits. I was not aware that they were doing the burgers yet. I'm going to try the sausage biscuit. As a matter of fact, I think that is going to be the next food review that I do. It's probably going to be the Hardee's sausage biscuits because the beyond one that is because something that I think I will enjoy. Um, I can eat pork. I, I do eat pork on a regular basis, uh, semi-regular basis, but that doesn't bother me like beef does. I just cannot stomach beef anymore. Now that I didn't know, Eric goes, the only issue is they're made of soy and soy is full of estrogen. Uh-oh, I guess we're all going to start turning into women. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't take that seriously, folks. That, that's a joke. Um, the amount of estrogen you would have to ingest for it to make any difference in your physical makeup would be 20, 50 times or more uh, the amount that you would get from eating like a Beyond Burger or something. Jonathan Grindel, well, all we got in my era is burgers, chicken, and any fast food and tons of coffee shops. Um, hmm, no uh, private uh, restaurants or cafes or diners if you're from the Northeast. Um, I would suggest not eating out. Uh, honestly, I try to limit how much I eat out nowadays. I might eat out two, two times, maybe three times a week on a bad week. Um, but when you eat out, you never know what you're putting in your body. Um, they, there was a, um, there was an expose on one of the morning shows. It was either good morning America or Sunday morning or something where they tested one of the big chains and I'm not going to name which one it was, but all these chain restaurants now, even the, the, the ones that are casual eating, give you a menu and they tell you what the nutrition facts are. They'll tell you the calories, the fat, you know, sugars and everything. So what they did is they actually tested uh, what was in the food they were eating versus what they said was in the food they were eating. And believe it or not, nine times out of 10, it had more fat, more sugar and more cholesterol, just to name a few, than was actually printed on those menus. So you have to be very careful when you eat out. For a dinner, it's like $10 to $20 a plate. It's actually not bad, especially in my area. Um, food can really get expensive, uh, especially when you eat out. That's why I always suggest um, eating in as much as possible. Definitely helps keep your waistline trim, too. Again, when you eat out, you never know what they're putting in that food. Victor Del Fuente, I recommend Beyond Meat meatballs that are really, they're really delicious, especially in a soup. And I should also preface that by saying that Beyond is the is a brand of meatless plant-based um, alternatives, um, but there are other, other types of like uh, veggie meatballs, veggie burgers, and you know, veggie sausage. Um, meat, Beyond being the most recognizable, the most famous, but I would have to say my favorite lately, especially with the meatballs has been the, uh, veggie meatballs from Ikea. Very, very well made. Um, I didn't like them at first, honestly, they were an acquired taste, but now that I've eaten them, especially I, especially in pasta, like I had the veggie meatballs with ravioli, they were really, really good. And you could, the thing I like about the ones from Ikea, you can actually see the large chunks of vegetables in them, whereas a lot of the um, Beyond and the other brands are highly processed, and you could just tell that they're highly processed, whereas the ones from Ikea have very few ingredients compared to the other brands, and when you cut them open, you can just tell that they're much healthier. 50 likes. There you go, Mark. We got to 50 likes. There we go. 50 likes. I'm sorry, folks. It is getting late at night for me. I, I might miss a word here or two. Two minutes down the road, we have a McDonald's and a bakery a, and Domino's pizza. Oh, I used to eat tons of Domino's back before I went on my lifestyle change. I loved it too, especially once they switched to the uh, heartier, zestier pasta sauce or pizza marinara sauce. 
Chickpea and lentil patty burgers are good, Sonic Wang says. Uh, yeah, I've had a few of those. Um, the ones I like that are chickpea and lentil are the ones from Aldi. Um, again, very few ingredients, so not highly processed, healthy, and just good tasting. I mean, let's face it. We all want to eat healthy, but if the food doesn't taste good, in the long run, we're not going to eat it. We're going to go back to our old ways. So they have to find a way to, if they can find a way to make the food taste good and also be healthy, that's the whole package right there, folks. And all these seems to be pretty good at that. Jonathan Grindle, when I go to DQ, I always tell them to not, oh, not to put the straw in the drink because I don't trust anyone since I don't know where they put their hands. You know, a little off topic, but that is a good point. Um, I don't think ours does that at all, to the best of my knowledge. That's that's kind of different. Free food tastes better. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe, but it still needs to be healthy. Healthy food is the way to go. But once again, and I'm going to reiterate this, I don't want anybody to think that constant binge eating with stuff like Doritos and chocolate candies is the way to go for long-term weight loss. It's not. But doing it every once in a while, especially after a really hard day of exercising like I did today, 32,000 steps. I think that's the most I've ever done, honestly. Um, your body needs that. Your body needs to recoup some of what it's lost. And you, you always want to run a deficit. When you're dieting, um, the idea, it doesn't matter how much you exercise, doesn't matter what you, necessarily what you eat. You need to burn off more calories than you're ingesting. And if you do that, you're going to lose weight. And, and to be brutally honest, you could you could theoretically eat junk like this, only junk like this. And if you're, if, if you're cutting back and you're burning more calories than you're taking in, you're still going to lose weight. But here's where it gets interesting. You might have seen people out there that are super skinny. And we're talking like maybe somebody like me that would be 6'2", 6'3", 160-ish pounds. And, and, you know... Being they're thin in our society, we think they're healthy, but maybe all they do is eat junk food. They just have a high metabolism. Doesn't make you healthy, folks. You The healthy way to live is to eat healthy. I know plenty of people out there that are heavier than me that probably are healthier than I am because they don't eat chocolate at all. Matter of fact, uh, my dad has a friend who's um, a senior. I'm not going to mention names. But, um, you know, he's well into his 80s now, and he's o overweight, maybe even bordering on obese. I'm not sure. But he doesn't eat sweets. He doesn't eat chocolates or anything like that. He watches what he eats, and he is extremely healthy. So don't think because you are technically overweight or maybe even lower category obese, that you are not healthy. If you're doing everything right, then maybe that's just your body telling you you need to be at that weight. And that's something that I need to, um, that's something I need to keep telling myself, honestly, because there are times that I really wish I was thinner. I, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys out there. I am so jealous, and that's a sin. I'm sorry. I'm guilty of it. I am so jealous of people that have that super thin frame that look great at the beach that can eat stuff like this. But that's just mentally. You know, deep down, I know that, you know, maybe they are healthy, but maybe they're not. So the moral of this part of the, the live stream is just because you may be overweight and look heavy, maybe you don't look great in a bathing suit, if you're doing everything right, if you're eating the right foods, if you're getting your exercise in, then you're good. Don't let anybody let you down. Don't let anybody tell you that, hey, you're too heavy. You must be unhealthy because that's what our society does. We are a society of vanity. V that's your word for this vlog, vanity. Vanity is another one of those sins. Actually, I think if you look in the Bible, it's a deadly sin. Vanity is basically um, looking at yourself and loving yourself. I mean, you, you're so vain. You need to make your body look perfect. You need to have the perfect skin, the perfect hair, the perfect nails, the perfect teeth or everything. 
That's not what it's supposed to be about, folks. It's supposed to be doing the best we can. And you know what? If we don't have that model or um, actor slim physique, it's all right. You know what? We're good in other ways. Eric's Friday Channel, there's a girl that works for my company, we eat McDonald's every freaking day. I'll say that word. She's working sometimes twice per shift. I forgot to mention she is probably 100 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. There's your testimonial right there. That's, it. That's a person that on the outside appears to be healthy. On the inside, I can guarantee you is not. If you're eating McDonald's every day, you are not healthy. I don't care who you are. Matter of fact, there was a gentleman that did a YouTube series where for one month he ate nothing but McDonald's food. Guess what happened to him? And he was a healthy eater. He gained 50 pounds. He he got high blood pressure. He got he was pre-diabetic at the uh, at the end of it and he had high cholesterol. Never had any problems before he started eating McDonald's. And the reason is McDonald's food and an extension, this goes with to all the fast food restaurants, is full of sugar, salt, cholesterol, carbohydrates, nothing good. Because at the end of the day, these fast food restaurants have to make a profit. And the way they make a profit is making their food taste as good as possible. And the way you make your food taste as good as possible is to load it with fat, sugar, salt, carbohydrates, all the things that taste good but are not good for us. They're just not. Supersize me that movie. Yeah, we are a super. Oh, supersize me. That was a uh, documentary they did about the obesity epidemic in uh, in America, and it, uh, and sadly, it's not in just America anymore. Um, England, is, we are America's number one fattest country. I believe the UK is number two, and number three is something like. Can, maybe Canada, um, but fast approaching, believe it or not, and this is a very sad story, um, Kuwait in the Middle East during Desert Storm, we um, freed them from the tyranny of, um, oh, what the heck was his name, Saddam, and um, we freed them, and they love us. I mean, they love us over there, but what happened was, when we freed them, that allowed American industry over there. And guess what happened, folks? Now, if you're in Kuwait, you'll see McDonald's, you'll see Burger Kings, you'll see Pizza Huts, you will see Domino's is really big there. And guess what? Now, Kuwaitis have the exact same problem with obesity that we do. See, and, and, and I don't want to get into a discussion about the evils of corporate America because at the end of the day, uh, yes, there are there is blame on both sides. You know, these corporations need to, in my opinion, they need to atone for what they're doing to America by force feeding. Well, I don't I don't want to put it that way um, by offering us these delicious, low cost high fat, high sugar foods that let's face it are very hard to resist. We have families out there that work single mothers, single fathers, what have you, they work a lot. And yes, when you look at something like McDonald's, for example, that has the dollar menu where you can get a dollar McDouble, you can get a dollar McChicken, you can get all of this delicious food for so cheap. It's easier, and sometimes the only option that these low-income um, people have to get a good meal, and that's why among the poor and the lower middle class, they are the ones in our society that are overweight and obese because they are getting, they are eating this food that just isn't great for them. And I was guilty of it too. There was a time years ago when I was making very little money. I still don't make a lot of money. I mean, YouTube barely pays a couple of bills for me. I, I can't make a living off of YouTube yet. I'd love to someday. Um, 
But there was a time where going to McDonald's to eat two or three times a day was really my only option or Burger King or KFC. I was actually really big into KFC for a while and Sonic, not too, not too big of a fan of McDonald's burgers, but the whole point of the matter is in our society, sometimes we just don't have a choice. We, we try to eat healthy, but the healthy food is much more expensive. I mean, it really is. Awesome computers. I ate McDonald's yesterday for the first time in a very long time, like months. It was pretty crappy. Yeah, you you lose your taste for it. If you stop eating it for a length of time, a month or two months, believe it or not, it won't taste that good when you go back. McDouble is now $2. Ooh, went up. <laughs> I prefer not, That just goes to show you how long it's been since I've actually eaten one. I prefer not to say how I know that you can get two McDoubles and a soda for $5. There you go, folks. You know what? I, I, and I never, I, I never try to sugarcoat things because that's not that's not me. I try to deal in reality. Yeah, it's fun to kind of, uh, like I said, binge eat every once in a while. <laughs> that was so bad tonight. But getting down to the, the serious nature of 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 this live stream. You need to make sure that you're eating as healthy as possible. Again, complex carbohydrates are a great option. I am not a fan of low-carb diets. Low-carb diets do not work in the long term. If you're trying to lose weight quickly, they will work. But once you get off of them um, and you get back into a normal routine, you're going to gain that weight back. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. The only, only way for a successful weight loss over time is to do it slowly and retrain your body and retrain specifically your mind into how it thinks about food and the types of food that it craves. Sonic Wango, Subway, eat fresh. <laughs> Not all the time. No, they have their own documentaries about that. My two biggest beefs with Subway. Number one, they're not all that cheap. There is no dollar menu at Subway. I think the cheapest thing there for is like one of their breakfast um, wraps for like two bucks. And I think for that, you just get egg whites and some veggies in there, like onions and peppers. Um, so they're not really that cheap, number one. Number two, their food is not all that healthy. When you really think about it, the, the majority of the subs and the cheaper ones, which are not really all that cheap... Um, are things like the cold cut combo, which has the worst of the worst cold cuts. We're talking salami, bologna, and in my area, they put in uh, pepperoni too. I don't know if they do that at all subways, but, and they also put cheese on it. So you're getting a, 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 a sandwich that is in almost every way is unhealthy is something like a McDouble and you're paying more for it. Now, are there healthy options in Subway? Yeah, of course there are. Um, but they're going to cost you more. I mean, things like the uh, honey roasted, uh, not honey roasted, um, the honey something, forest ham, black forest ham um, is a great option. That's actually pretty good for you except for the salt. Um, but that's usually one of their more expensive subs. Same for their... Um, uh, what is it? The uh, Philly steak. Believe it or not, that's actually pretty healthy because they use lean cut of beef and, you know, there's not a lot of preservatives in there. But even stuff like that has a lot of preservatives. You are better off making your own food and bringing it with you than eating out in almost every um, respect, that in every situation, everything I can think of. Victor Del Fuente, at Taco Bell, you can get a $5.99 box of two tacos, a burrito, and a dessert, along with a large drink. Uh, you know, I, I see a pattern here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you guys right there. Stay away from fast food. Just don't eat it. I don't eat it anymore with the very, very rare exception of maybe Taco Bell, because I do go there sometimes, and I do enjoy something like a, um, a beef burrito or a chicken taco. Again, don't eat beef. So bean burrito, not beef burrito. Um, but I rarely ever, ever eat fast food. Gives your colon a clean out. Yeah. 
Um, if it, you know what's even better, we have so many good Mexican restaurants in our area. If I want a good colon cleanse, I'll go to one of those. <clears throat> El Puente. Mm -hmm. I just gave them a little bit of a plug, but you know what? They're one of my favorites. Actually, mom and dad went there uh, this afternoon. Eric's Friday Channel, that KFC Famous Bowl thing is pretty awesome, though. Yeah, I, I've heard about that. I know you can get different um, mixings in there, but again, I, I'm I'm, get, I'm I'm changing topics here because I don't want to get into a fast food debate. That's what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> One broadcast. Hey, what's your thoughts on Chipotle? Ah, okay. <laughs> I do like Chipotle. I have been to Chipotle maybe twice, and I really need to go back again. Chipotle. Um, it's not fast food. I, you get your food fast, but it is not what I would call fast food because all their ingredients are not highly processed. They're fresh. Um, it's kind of like the thing with the Panda Express versus something like a, a, a Chinese food restaurant you find in the mall. Uh, even though the Chinese food restaurants I find, I, you know, I find in my malls I actually prefer over Panda. Panda Express, believe it or not, is actually the healthier option. Um, so, yes, in, in your in my long answer, because I'm always long-winded, uh, yes, I do do really like Chipotle. Um, I think when I got there last time, I got their two burrito special that had the wild rice, um, the beef, and the and I got one beef and one chicken because it's been that long. I did use to eat beef, folks. Don't 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 get me wrong. I've ne I've I have eaten beef a lot in the past. I just can't eat it anymore. Yes, if you can see him cooking in the back, that's always a good thing. You always want to see how clean the kitchen is. Mark coming in. I hop is good, but it's too expensive. Um, yes. And in my area, which is pretty close to your area too, uh, they've gone downhill quite a bit. The last time I went there, I, again, I got a burger. It's been a long time. Um, I was very disappointed with, I used to get their monster burger that had the two big beef patties and piece of American cheese, beef patty, piece of American cheese, beef patty, kind of like a Big Mac without the middle bun. And, um, it was very disappointing. Yeah, last season of Homeland. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've heard it's a good show, though. Wow, we got 52 likes. Only 12 watchers, though. Oh, we're up to 13. Give me another watcher. 13 is an unlucky number for me. Hopefully we get another one real quick. Oh, we're back down to 12, so we lost one. Um, reviews for noobs. A two-minute walk from my house is a Chinese takeaway fish and chips shop. It's good. It's so good. Okay, I'm guessing you're. I, I didn't know. I didn't know this. I'm guessing you're from England. If it, if you're calling it a Chinese takeaway, and a fish and chip shop, definitely somewhere in the UK. Um, I've always been a fan of uh, keeping up appearances. I love British comedies. I do like fish and chips, um, but. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't like the way they do it over in the UK, even though it's a healthier way. I know you guys use like uh, oil and vinegar. I like to dip mine in tartar sauce, which the, some people probably don't even know what that is. It's made with mayonnaise, um, sweet relish, pepper, and sometimes you put garlic in it. It's really good. New Zealand. Okay. Okay. But there is, a, if you're in New Zealand, there was definitely a United Kingdom or UK influence there. Because I, I know, I know inevitably they always call them Chinese takeaways and fish and chip shops. Go to City Walk. It is, it's good. Uh, City Walk. Where is City Walk? I want to say, I know it's a chain. I think we have one in Norfolk somewhere. Eric's Friday Channel, they built a Chipotle by where I work. Never been there, but we were all also promised it was going to be a Chick-fil-A. Ooh, major bummer there. So most people are mad. Yeah, I'd be too. I like, I do like Chick-fil-A. And again, not a place I go to a lot. But if I go to Chick-fil-A, 
I get the uh, chicken biscuit, the chicken and egg biscuit. And the way to do that is, again, not a health food item, but maybe on one of your binge days, get the chicken and egg biscuit and you take ketchup and mayonnaise and mix it together and that's your sauce. It is so good. Oh, boy. got uh, I think I got an eyelash sticking in my eye here. No, didn't get it yet. No, I hope I didn't scratch my eye. Ah, there it is. I have this problem where my eyelashes grow and they'll roll back into my eye. It really stinks. Well, we have 45 minutes in. You know what? Let's go for a little while longer because uh, I think you guys have some really good opinions here and I'd like to hear it. But I want to hear what a little bit of a challenge towards the end of this for you guys. I want to hear what healthy foods you like to eat. I mean, we're talking a lot about unhealthy food. What healthy foods do you like to eat? Because I think we can help the group out here, maybe build some ideas of things you can eat um, to kind of cleanse your body a little bit, if you will, especially after a weekend of binge eating. So let me know what healthy foods you all like to eat out there. Awesome computers, man after my own heart, bananas. I have at least two a day. Awesome, very, very good for your body. However, bodies are very binding. So if you have that constipation issue going on, don't eat too many bananas because you won't poop for a week, as Jake Harper would say from uh, Two and a Half Men. Chicken noodle soup. Um, it depends. I would go with the Progresso one because that has the least amount of sodium, even though I like the Campbell's version, which is full of sodium and not all that healthy. Um, yeah, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that as a healthy food. Grapefruit, reviews for noobs. Um, used to eat it quite a bit. I actually prefer it over uh, things like oranges, um, but they have to be pink grapefruits. There is a difference. There's like the regular grapefruit, which looks more orangey, and there's the pink grapefruit. I've always preferred the pink grapefruit. Looks like one broadcast, homemade. I'm thinking anything homemade, definitely. Uh, PPR 7997. I like the balanced break snacks from Costco. Um, I've never had them before, but yeah, good option there. George Blakely, bananas and apples, uh, awesome computers. Also grapes, Mark Covington, carrots, all time favorite side dish. Very good for the eyes. Probably need to eat some more of those. Ramen is the worst. Um, maybe unless you make it from scratch. Yes. Ramen is full of fat, salt. One of the worst things you can do to your body. Hence, Pretty much that's why college students live on it because it's cheap and they really don't care what they do to their bodies. <laughs> Brad Smith likes applesauce. Interesting. Um, just be careful. Make sure the applesauce you get is not sweetened with high fructose corn syrup and sugar. You're good to go. Better yet, make it yourself. I've, I've, I've never done it, but I've heard it's not that hard to do. My aunt does it. I think the main ingredient in applesauce, other than apples, is sugar and cinnamon, or cinnamon and sugar. Eric's Variety Channel. Uh, a lot of times I will eat a lot of fruits for lunch, like grapes, bananas, blueberries. I do think things were where I take, what does it say? I do this thing where I take wheat tortillas and spread peanut butter and blueberries and strawberries on it. Okay. Not my cup of tea, but yeah, all right. I mean, it definitely sounds healthy. Again, peanut butter, make sure you're going with as natural peanut butter as possible. Nothing with high fructose corn syrup. Um, blueberries and strawberries, you can get them all year long. You might pay a little bit more and they may not be as tasty out of season, but yeah, great. Just make sure healthy and natural and not processed is the way to go. Excuse me. Had an itchy nose, and I didn't think you guys wanted to see that on camera. Nick Roberts, don't bananas have radiation in them? Not that I'm aware of, but <sighs> something to look up for sure. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh-oh, there's a fight in the classic mobile home house. You know what? Uh, wait, what, what do they say is good for that? Um, cinnamon. Give Both of you go to opposite corners and eat something with cinnamon. Cinnamon is supposed to calm you down. It's supposed to be uh, 
Also supposed to be an aphrodisiac too, so might have a twofer there. Definitely not kid-friendly in this one, but that's okay. <laughs> sorry, I have a three-year-old. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope he wasn't watching this, Eric. I know I, I, I try to be family-friendly, but sometimes I'll let an adult joke slip in there once in a while. Dark chocolate. Yes, very, very good option. Um, people don't think about that because whenever we think of chocolate, we think, oh, it can't be healthy. It's all full of sugar. It's bad for our body. Dark chocolate is the exception. Dark chocolate is not is very good for your heart, believe it or not. Um, I eat dark chocolate every day. Uh, not always in the same forms. A lot of times it'll be the dark chocolate dove candies. Um, lately I've been into the Lind. L-I-N-D-T or L-N-D-T. I can't remember how they spell it, but they're the little chocolate bonbons like uh, Pe Piggy Bundy always used to eat on um, uh, Married with Children. So, yeah, dark chocolate, very, very good. Mark, I like golden delicious apples. They are my favorite kind of apples. I don't know. I've ever had a golden delicious. I used to eat a lot of Granny Smith apples before I started having teeth problems unfortunately i don't really eat apples much anymore even though i do miss them though so there are other things i'm into mangoes right now another month from now maybe i'll be into blueberries or raspberries whatever's in season and that's another good point um you always want to eat food especially fruits and vegetables they're in season they're going to be cheaper to buy number one number two they're going to taste better i mean when stuff's out of season it's been in cold storage for a while and it's not going to taste that good Uh, we're into a radiation debate right now. Yeah, most most forms of radiation are not dangerous from what I understand, but who knows? You never know. All right, Nick, going on a bike ride to get my nephew, nephew from school. My nephew from school. Sounds good. Have fun. I'm going to try to get one in tomorrow too. Australian mangoes are the best. Uh, I'll have to take your word for it. I mean, thinking about the climate in Australia, that would not surprise me in the least. 51 minutes in. Oh, I'm getting winded, folks. And it looks like I totally forgot to bring my uh, water over here. So, you know what? I promise you guys an hour. We're going to do an hour. So let's go for it. You, know, you might see those white crispies on the side of my mouth. It'll have to happen because I am not getting up to get my water. I am royally tired, too, by the way. I took some Benadryl because of my allergies, and, oh, just put you right out. Clementines are also dangerous because I can pop them like chips. Yeah, but they're really good for you, too. Um, high, antiox high in antioxidants. Here's a good rule of thumb. All your fruits out there that are a little bit tart or acidic, um, acid-based fruits, are very good for you because they have antioxidants. They'll actually um, help kill the free radicals in your body, and they can help prevent cancer. Um, matter of fact, a quick story. When my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, she's passed now, but she had all different kinds of cancer. Um, and when she was fighting, I think it was breast cancer i might be wrong it was something like that uh no it was breast cancer my aunt would make her a, a smoothie every morning with blueberries yogurt and i think pineapple or orange juice and anyway pineapples and um blueberries are acidic and they're very good they actually help fight the cancer cells so not only will it help you help prevent you from getting cancer but it can also help you fight it as well not been substantiated at all by the FDA. They would probably deny it, but I've seen it work. It really does. Do you do spring water or distilled? Um, actually, neither. I do tap water and I filter it myself through uh, Brita, Brita filter. Um, if I do buy bottled water, um, which I do sometimes, it is, I got to think about this for a minute, spring water. It is spring water. Though drinking distilled water is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just 
because they remove all of the impurities, all the minerals in there, it's not quite as good for you. And sometimes people just don't like the taste. Believe it or not, water does have a taste, and that's down to the, um, the minerals that are in it. Mark Covington, are smoothies healthy? Uh, they can be, and for the most part, they usually are. Um, but you got to be very careful. Uh, if you add a lot of uh, sugar in there, um, you know, you add, some people add things to make it taste better, like sugar, or um, I've even seen people put in heavy syrup, like from fruit cocktail. That's when it gets unhealthy. You want to make sure you uh, put things in there that are fairly low in sugar, or keep the sugar out and sweeten it with something like honey. Honey is a much better alternative. 17 watchers, 57 likes. I got to wonder if this video has gotten any dislikes. Sloth says, hello, catching us at the end of this live stream. But that's all right. You know what? There's always going to be another live stream. And I have to say, I'm really enjoying this uh, keyboard. Uh, not necessarily to arbitrarily change topics, but I picked two of these up at the uh, CHKD on Little Creek the other day. These are the Logitech K750 um, uh, Mac version. These are actually the Mac versions of these, but they work on PCs. And the cool thing is they are solar powered. So you never have to charge them as long as you have them in the light. And it doesn't have to be the sunlight. You can actually use something like a desk lamp that I use, and that'll charge it. There's a little button you push that'll tell you if it's charging or not. Really, really cool. PPR 7997. I do both house farm smoothies, but I focus on protein content. It is very important. You want to limit your carbs uh, no matter what, and protein is definitely the way to go. So if, if they're protein based, absolutely. We're almost done here. So just a few more questions. I just got a Logic keyboard for my birthday for my brother. Love Logitech, by the way. I love almost everything they put out. My uh, mouse is the Logitech. What the heck is this thing? G203. It's sold as a gaming mouse, but it's really a cheap uh, gaming mouse. But it works great for what I do. Not, not a gamer myself. Oh, boy, I may have to just end this now because I am losing steam quickly. Fast approaching my bedtime, too, folks. Oh, all right. Well, let's see. PPR, 7997, how's Dad doing? He's out racing that Hearst Olds. No. Um, he's doing fine, by the way. Don't get me wrong. He's, uh, he's up and walking, but... During the winter, the cars stay in the garage. Um, he's always worried about getting salt or rain or something on him. You'll, you'll have to ask him what the thought process behind that is. But in the winter, he barely ever takes them out. I wish I wish he would because I do enjoy uh, driving them sometimes. All right, folks, I think I'm going to end it here. It's a couple minutes short, but you know what? I think we've accomplished a lot tonight. And um, I really hope you guys got some good information out there. You encourage me, and I hope I encourage you. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.